It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. President Trump just announced the appointment of Jelena McWilliams, a lawyer from Fifth Third Bank Corp to head the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, known as FDIC. The appointment is an important step in Trump's effort to deregulate the financial industry. FDIC, together with the Federal Reserve, and the Office of the Controller of the Currency are in charge of writing financial rules. Now, these rules will be revamped following the dismantling of the 2010 Dodd-Frank Act, which uh, has already passed the Senate and will probably pass the House very soon. Now, joining me to analyze the consequences of, of this final appointment of Jelena McWilliams is Bill Black. Bill is a white collar criminologist, former financial regulator, and associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's also the author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Thank you. Bill, uh, about the appointment of Jelena McWilliams, first of all, who is she? Where does she stand on financial regulation? So Fifth Third Bank um, has the stupidest name in all of banking, uh, but is actually a, well, one of the country's largest uh, banks. And uh, she comes from both a uh, law and um, uh, finance background in uh, terms of her parents. Uh, the dad uh, was on the finance side, mom was uh, one of the first, uh, uh, was the first female partner uh, at the firm. So she's uh, the next generation uh, after a number of the uh, pathbreakers. She stands four square with Donald Trump uh, uh, on uh, the three Ds, deregulation, desupervision, and de facto decriminalization. Uh, you, uh, in the introduction, uh, correctly uh, noted the bill that's passed the Senate uh, we had an, a, a report in that and then an additional report when they decided to make it even worse uh, because uh, they were emboldened by the significant number of Democratic senators uh, who uh, joined in helping to gut uh, Dodd-Frank. Uh, and the House uh, is not absolutely certain because there are some folks who want to go um, so far uh, in destroying regulation that uh, that it might actually cause the, the Democrats to fall off. But most people expect uh, that they will simply make it worse uh, and that the Senate Democrats will happily, uh, or this rump group uh, of Senate, Senate Democrats will happily accede uh, to further gutting uh, Dodd-Frank. So, if um, you know zero to ten, where ten, ten is maximum uh, deregulation, um, the, the current law is you know a six uh, type of thing. Uh, but where they're going to do the really aggressive deregulation and desupervision and de facto decriminalization is going to be at the regulatory level. And they've been stalled for the usual reason that uh, the Trump administration hasn't been able to get uh, its act together uh, on appointments. Um, and because uh, there was actually uh, a Republican appointee uh, at the FDIC uh, who was one of the nation's uh, leading uh, advocates uh, for effective uh, regulation. So they've gotten rid of traders like that uh, to their cause. So the banking regulatory agencies will do vastly more deregulation by regulation and by simply refusing to enforce regulation, refusing to prosecute uh, criminals, than will occur in formal legislation. And they've been held up uh, not so much by a legal requirement, but a practical requirement. And that was without an FDIC leader, uh, these banking regulatory agencies, when they deregulate, like to act uh, collectively. And they do uh, because of the race to the bottom uh, issue. Uh, they're all desperately afraid that one of them will be even weaker uh, than they are and that the banks uh, will change their charter. Uh, so you gave the uh, list of surviving banking regulatory uh, agencies. 
the OCC, the Office of the Comptroller of Currency, was actually created in the Civil War to help finance the Civil War. And so it's by far the oldest of the federal uh, banking agencies, and it is supposed to regulate, but of course doesn't, national banks. And national banks are typically uh, by far the largest banks in the system. The Federal Reserve uh, system uh, is supposed to regulate bank holding companies and state chartered banks that are members of the Federal Reserve System. And the FDIC is sort of what's left. Uh, so it, it insures all of these uh, federally regulated banks, but on top of that regulates state chartered uh, banks that are not members of the Federal Reserve System. So typically much smaller. Uh, the Fed banks that it regulates directly vary from fairly small to the, the bank holding give companies gives them, in essence, uh, concurrent jurisdiction with the OCC uh, over the biggest uh, banks. So that's the alphabet soup. And these entities are always trying to weaken regulation, but on top of that, make sure that no one of the three uh, gets a clear advantage in having really gutted regulation because it's easy to change charters uh, and seek out the weak regulation. And that means that not having an FDIC chair has stalled their collective efforts to gut um, Dodd-Frank legislation uh, and, and in particular the Volcker rule. And now um, with what's expected to be this new FDIC chair who's fully invested with the Trump uh, agenda, uh, it's going to be a slaughter of the remaining uh, bank regulation. Um, and a lot of it will be invisible in addition to getting rid of the rules, they'll simply uh, cease enforcing them. Uh, and I just came back from uh, presenting at um, a, ma a major appraisal um, meeting and the really scary new uh, information is that the three uh, big federal agencies that I've just been describing are now extraordinarily hostile uh, to appraisers and appraisals. Uh, and uh, I've said it before, but the critical thing you need to understand is if you don't know what you're talking about in terms of banking, you think of underwriting the process of determining uh, whether you should make the loan, what its risks are and such, as, as simply a cost center that reduces your profits. Uh, if you understand banking, you understand that either underwriting is the thing that is the single thing most critical uh, to bank profitability and survival. And when the banking regulators have become so insane uh, that they're going to attack um, one of the two, three pillars of underwriting, which is the appraisal, uh, then we can move up the date at which the next and larger financial crisis uh, will occur. Hmm. Wow, Bill, um, if the FDIC is there to ensure ordinary consumer bank deposits um, are secure, as you said, up to $250,000 uh, in, in um, that we might have put in the bank. Now, they should be or shouldn't they be very concerned or cautious about deregulating because at the end they will be the ones having to pay um, if the bank fails. Um, is that a safe assumption or not? Well, uh, that's a particularly insightful uh, uh, view. Indeed, many economists and regulators have argued exactly that because of the insurance obligation, the FDIC which is primary regulator, as I said, mostly for small banks, but which has under the statute secondary authority uh, when the primary um, bank regulator isn't doing its job to step in. By the way, those agencies hate that role for the FDIC, that secondary backup role. So they would call it second guessing. Uh, even though the FDIC has been, just as you said, um, more conservative, uh, more oriented towards safety and soundness, and if the primary regulator had listened to them, uh, would have prevented a great deal of problem. Also, it's uh, worth um, stressing, not just mentioning, that the FDIC is almost solely responsible 
for um, the fact that the um, crisis we had in 2008 wasn't more than twice as large. And here's why really quickly. Um, the Federal Reserve in particular, and its uh, most anti-regulatory economists, had designed what's called Basel II, which is the uh, international capital standards, to come darn close to eliminating capital requirements. It was so bad that we have an act called the Prompt Corrective Action law that was adopted in light of the savings and loan crisis. And under that law, the biggest banks, if Basel II had been adopted the way it was proposed, would have simultaneously had excessive capital under the Basel II standard and be defined by the prompt corrective action statute as critically undercapitalized and we should be putting them uh, into receivership or selling them. So the FDIC fought a uh, ferocious and heroic rear guard action against the Federal Reserve, which is typically much more powerful uh, than the FDIC. And the FDIC insisted on getting data. And finally, in, when these numbers came out, so embarrassed uh, the Federal Reserve that it created what's called a, um, a leverage ratio so that you couldn't fall below a particular capital requirement. In general, Europe did not do so. So in general, European banks uh, were about twice as leveraged, that means debt to equity, as U.S. banks. And that's the answer to the question people may have wondered, hey, if this uh, non-prime liar's loan crisis was overwhelmingly in U.S. securities, how come Europe um, suffered such a devastating uh, hit? And it's Two reasons. One, uh, that their banks were massively more leveraged and therefore gotten in much, much more trouble when asset values declined, and that they um, adopted austerity, uh, which again is like bleeding a patient uh, to make it healthy. The U.S. eventually adopted austerity, but initially it had moderate surplus, and the economic evidence is quite strong that that um, moderate stimulus. Uh, package uh, dramatically reduced uh, the the uh, Great Recession, sped uh, the recovery. Unfortunately, uh, Obama and the Republicans abandoned it. And in an infamous State of the Union address, uh, Obama said, the nation is pulling in its belts and therefore the government must too and adopt austerity, which is uh, economically uh, illiterate <laughs> and proved very harmful to Obama and to Democrats. Uh, Bill, so much more questions to ask you. Uh, the Senate bill uh, that was recently passed raises the size of the bank uh, that will come under FDIC to be regulated. Now, what else does the bill say and what is the most dangerous elements of it? Oh, it says a bunch of different things and they're adding to it already in the Senate and adding to it in the House. So, um, But it, it has things like um, commercial real estate. So commercial real estate is, uh, again, the answer to a trick question, what uh, led to the most banks in America being put into receivership? And it wasn't um, liar's loans or subprime or any of that. It was commercial real estate. And of course, there's a hidden answer to that. That's because we bailed out the largest banks and it was relatively smaller banks that blew themselves up in commercial real estate. And the banking regulatory agencies, which was par for the course uh, under both the Clinton and uh, the Bush, uh, admin, Bush two administrations, uh, they were they warned about all of these things. In fact, their warnings look uh, prescient. What they didn't do, what they were absolutely unwilling to do, was actually regulate. Which, if you're a regulator, is a major problem. So they just warned, and again, it's like uh, telling your uh, teenage son or daughter when they're about 15 uh, how they should dress and who they should hang out with and who should they, they uh, should date. Uh, you may be giving excellent advice, but the chance of it being taken is pretty close to nil. All right, Bill. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Take care. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.